Hey everybody, this is Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker, where we are believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. The Bible says that God is Baal Perazim. He's the Lord of the breakthrough. So expect breakthrough to happen in America, in the nations of the earth, in your life. Today we have a very good friend, uh, incredible mighty woman of God. I call her the Harley riding, uh, the gun slinging, the demon slaying. The fire baptizing, the one and only Miss Katie Souza. Welcome to the show, The Breaker Man. <laughs> Thanks, my friend. You are so awesome. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. We're going to have a fun today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, already the joy of the Lord is hitting us. And uh, I mean, I mean, you're so awesome, too. And, uh, you know, we just appreciate you, your ministry, just, you know, how, how you've paid the price with the Lord mm -hmm. and just uh, just your testimony. It's such a fragrance to Jesus. So thank you. Today on The Breaker, we're going to talk about breakthrough in your soul, breakthrough in terms of inner healing, deliverance. And, you know, this is a topic a lot of people shy away from. I've seen two extremes, Katie. People can either really shy away from it and yep. act ignorant and act all high pride on a high horse, thinking that they're perfect. Yep. Or people can go to the other extreme and be constantly stuck, be stuck in these kumbaya sozo circles no. where they're always looking for whatever's under a rock. No. And rather than being, pre and I feel the Holy Ghost right now, mm -hmm. rather than being present, enjoying what Jesus did 2,000 years ago and being present, but they're always, you know, in the Flintstones age, you know, trying to flip every rock, you yeah. know, but, but there's two extremes, but there is a real necessity, need of inner healing, deliverance, and freedom. And that's who you are. That's what you walk in. We yeah. so appreciate that. So talk to us, ma'am, just on breakthrough in your soul and in inner healing and deliverance. Talk to us. Why is that so important today? Well, you hit some uh, an important point there. There yeah. is two schools. People people get so prideful, they don't think they need any soul healing, but that's not true. You know, it says that we will be transformed into his image, into his likeness from glory to glory. So it shows uh, glory to glory means progression. It shows that for our entire walk with Jesus, we're going to be progressively getting transformed into his image. And that means body, soul, and spirit. We're supposed to get better and better as we go. So there is a need for us to be transformed into what Christ looks like in every area of our life. But then there's also the other school of thought where people are just constantly, okay, what's next? What's What, what do I have in my soul now? What's going on? So where's the middle ground? The middle ground is that we ask the Holy Ghost to show us when we Come need on. to know if something is happening in our inner man. If we have a behavior that is shutting us down, if we have something in our bloodline that has been carried through into our life and is affecting us now, if we have an open door that allows a legal landing strip for the enemy, those places happen in the soul. So we, we allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us when those times arrive, and then we allow him to facilitate healing through dunamis power and the blood of Jesus. See, what people don't understand, the people that don't believe in soul healing don't understand something. We are three-part beings, body, soul, and spirit. And when the Bible says that we're new creations in Christ, we're brand new, is referring to our spirit man becoming totally perfect upon our regeneration in Christ. But the soul has to go through a process. Yes. And like I just, like I just referenced, the thing is, people go, well, no, that's not true. Well, even by natural experience, we need to we know that that's true. We still get offended. We still get bothered. We still get fearful or worried or, or you know, judgmental or critical. Those things happen in the soul. And, they're, and sometimes they can be chronic, where people have chronic bents towards being offended or, or wow. being bitter or being judgmental. And so when, when we catch ourselves having a repeated negative pattern, that means what? Our soul needs to be healed. Paul said, I do the thing I don't want to do because of the sin nature fixed and operating in my soul. Mm -hmm. my, my. So when we're stuck in a rut of sin or bad behaviors or attitude problems, it's because we're, and it causes us to do things we don't want to do. It's because of what? The sin nature fixed and operating in our soul. Sin lives in the soul realm. Sin wounds the soul. Trauma mm. wounds the soul. Mm. I mean, look, um, 
The examples of that are Isaiah 30, 26. The, the Bible says in, in that verse in the Amplified Classic, that God says, I heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds that came from their sin. Meaning when we sin, when people sin against us, when we, you know, act out, we yell or scream or get angry or rob or do adultery or take pills or whatever it is, that sin can actually wound the soul. Okay. Mm. And then trauma also wounds us too, because you see the example with Job, man, he went through a lot of trauma, lost all the servants, lost all his, his flocks and his herds. He, he got physically attacked in his body with boils. Uh. All his children died. And it says like, 23 times in the book of Job, he says stuff like, my soul is bitter, my soul is vexed, my wow. soul is poured out, my soul is mourning, meaning he got wounded in his soul by those traumas. So the, the our life that we live, which is a life of challenge, especially nowadays yeah. in what's happening in this earth, there's so much trauma going on and there's even sin going on. People getting angry, people allowing themselves to get bitter at what's happened in the in the planet. It, that alone will cause our souls to be wounded. So we have to be babysitting our souls and we have to make sure we stay clean of the wounds that could come from the trauma we lived through or the sin that we slip into during these, these times or that we partake of. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep ourselves clean and we have to get healed of the past stuff. Then we're going to see breakthrough. That's why, you know, that's why I'm probably on this broadcast with you because one of the biggest things to bring breakthrough in people's lives is soul healing. My gosh, uh, there's so much that you just shared right there and you definitely carry a breaker anointing. Uh, it's just so phenomenal, especially to see uh, a woman of God moving in that power dimension. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's something so interesting you said, you know, you said 23 times in the book of Job, Job himself laments and he says oh my soul is vexed my soul etc etc now this is kind of a theological doc doctrinal thing when it comes to you know faith right or faith declaration um i believe it is important to in a sense recognize what's going on in your soul but don't identify yourself with that and don't put that on or in a sense don't take ownership of it but it's important to recognize but it's not you and i think there's a lot of times you know when we talk about healing or deliverance there's a lot of times people really take ownership of something when no you should recognize that you're not feeling too well but again recognize who jesus is and the finish we're going to cross but you should recognize it because i believe when you take in a sense, when you recognize, then you can only properly give it to the Lord. But don't let that become your identity, which many times seems to be the case. But I think there's been this theological dispute, you know, uh, confusion maybe, where a lot of times, you know, we say, oh, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. It's like, no, lady, you're not. I mean, no, you're actually, you probably need to be delivered the most, right? Right. But then it's kind of been that that teaching that's kind of got us confused rather than recognizing to fully release it. Does it make sense to you? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, first of all, we do have to recognize it because then we can do something about it. We yeah. have been given supernatural tools to get healed. I mean, like the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in um, Leviticus 17, 11, that, a blood, that the blood atoneth for the soul. Okay, why does it say the soul? Why doesn't it just say the blood atones for sin or the blood atones for you or the blood atones for your life or whatever? It says the blood atones for the soul for a reason because the blood actually cleanses the soul. The Bible talks about how our conscience is cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Well, the soul is made up of the conscious, the mind, the will, and the emotions. And the blood of Jesus, when we decree it over ourselves, and when we understand what it does, that the blood is for wow. sin, but it's also for the atoning or cleansing yeah. or healing for, of the soul. So when you catch yourself, that's why you have to recognize, right? You don't want to stay, like you said, trapped in some false identity of, a, you know, how people say, yeah. well, I'm just that kind of a person. I tend to be a negative type of person. Well... Okay, instead of that, you allowing that to be your identity, why don't you say, yeah. I I don't want to be a negative person. That's how I've been acting. 
I'm going to get rid of this negativity. How do you do that? Well, first you recognize it. You don't let it be your identity. And then you take action. And the blood is one of the things that you can do to cleanse your soul of negativity. You can sit and say, Lord, I repent of being negative. Take your blood, as Leviticus 17 says, and as the New Testament says, cleanse my conscience of every negative thought, cleanse my will of every negative decision, cleanse my emotions of all negativity. And right now, by your blood, we move into, we don't, you know, you said people say stuff like, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. Well, that's a great confession, right? But it's not backed by knowledge. Mm, wow. It's like, you know, we, we perish for lack of knowledge. Wow. Okay, so, so let's take that great confession and now find out how are you healed? Mm, so how good. are you healed that thing? Well, one of the things is the blood. Wow. It, it cleanses and atones for the sin that lives in our soul. And that could be the sin of alcoholism, adultery, negativity, critical spirit, bitterness, anger, offense, whatever it is. But then it's also partaking of the Holy Spirit. We have to learn that we're walking around, we're vessels carrying the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I mean, that is a big deal, right? The Spirit of Christ. It's the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of God lives in us. And in and, and, and the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 2.10 in the Amplified Classic, the Holy Spirit examines and explores all things. Mm. He finds the things hidden from us Hallelujah. and beyond our scrutiny and brings us the divine counsels of God. So you could say, man, what is my problem? Why is this happening to me? Why am I still sick? Why am I acting this way? Why do I feel depressed every day when I wake up? You know, every day, everybody asks a why. I mean, right now, your people are watching, my people are watching. And there's probably not a single person that's watching that, that could say, oh, I never ask God why for anything. Oh, we always ask, why is this happening, God? Why, wow. why is this going on in my life? Why can't I get the breakthrough? We are always asking a why. But instead of asking the why, why don't we ask Holy Spirit uh, to on. do what 1 Corinthians 2.10 in the Amplified Classic says? Send him out to explore and examine that situation. Ask him to find the things that are hidden and beyond our scrutiny. Ask him to bring the things that are that are that are the divine counsels of God. And a lot of times that has to do with soul healing. Because a lot of our problems come from the soul. We don't realize that the Bible says you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Meaning your business is going to prosper, your marriage is going to prosper, your finances are going to prosper, your ministry is going to prosper, your church is going to prosper, and you're going to be in health. Your physical body is going to be healed of diseases, disorders, pain, situations, organ failures, organ issues, oh. menopausal issues. You're going to be healed when you are prospered and in health, even as your soul okay. is prospered. So we have to we have to make sure that we know Holy Spirit lives in us. He can answer all of our questions, including everything that's in our soul that might be causing financial failure, problems in our marriage, right? Come on, sickness in our body, uh -huh. issues in our ministries. We have to send the Holy Spirit out to do those things. And then we have to know that Holy Spirit has power available. Wow. When, when Holy Spirit came to live in us, he didn't come by himself, okay? Yeah, the yeah. Bible says in Acts 1-8 that you will receive power yes, Lord. when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So Holy Spirit's a He's a person. He's not a thing. He's not. Holy Spirit isn't power. He's uh -huh. a person, but Come he on. brings power with him. Yeah. So the, the great thing about this power is all the things that word power means. It's the Greek word dunamis. It uh -huh. means power to perform miracles. So if you got an issue in your body or your soul or your marriage, or your kids or your schooling or your ministry, you've got right now living inside of you, the Holy Spirit and power, you have the power to perform a miracle in that area of your need, right? It also means a uh, power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth. So you've got an issue with your finances, you're in debt, you have a poverty mindset, so you, you need uh, an idea to flourish, you need a, a business idea or something else like that. Well, you got the Holy oh. Spirit power inside you, so you're going to uh, have power and influence that, go on, that belongs to riches and wealth. But the word power there, or dunamis, also means excellence of soul. 
Mm. That's so important. And people do not realize that. Yeah. They do not realize that even though we're, we get wounded by all of the stuff we go through and the traumas we live through and the sins that people commit against us and the sins that we commit ourselves, we are carrying around, we are vessels that carry around the Holy Spirit who can search out and find the cause of anything, including anything in our soul that's causing us failure in any place, but also that we have that dunamis power. And dunamis means, in the Greek, excellence of soul. So, so if, if, if somebody out there even now is watching and they're like, man, I'm so depressed every morning. Well, then when you get up in the morning, you lay your hand on your belly and you say, Holy Spirit, I release you to find out why am I depressed and find out the root cause of that and then loose dunamis power on it on. and make me what dunamis means, excellent soul. So I'm thinking excellent thoughts. I'm having an excellent will to, that makes excellent decisions. I have excellent emotions so I don't feel depressed. I don't feel anxious. We have power in us. We have Holy Ghost in us. Oh. We have to use it. You know, uh, Ephesians 3, Pastor Ben says, um, it says that God does exceedingly above and beyond all that we could ever ask or imagine yes. according to. Then he tells, okay, did you hear that? People say that all the time. God will do exceedingly above and beyond all that we could ever ask or imagine. You know, we, we quote that verse all the time, right? But then we don't connect it to the condition of the next part of the verse. It says mm -hmm. that God does exceedingly above and beyond all that we could ever, ever ask or imagine according to the power that's yeah. dunamis all right. that's at work in us. So good. We have to put dunamis power to work in us. Yeah. We have to go every day. It's like, if you got an issue, you're feeling jealous that day. Uh, you're feeling covetous, you're feeling worried or fearful, you have to attack that problem. You have to Come repent, on. put the blood on it, say, I'm not worried. I repent for being worried. I repent for coming into agreement with anger. I repent for coming into agreement with fear or unforgiveness or whatever. I, I use the blood to cleanse my soul of that. But then I send out the Holy Spirit and I put Holy Spirit in power, dunamis to work. Oh, so good. To make me excellent of soul. And then I'm going to have exceedingly above and beyond all that I could ever ask or imagine. You know, I love, uh, I'm going to read a, I'm going to read a scripture. Yeah, I love this scripture. It, it's Ephesians 3, 16 in the Amplified Classic. And, and I know a lot of people are going to really resonate with this. It, it says, may he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory. This is Paul speaking, by the way, um, to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power mm. that's dunamis which means excellence of soul in the inner man that's your soul not your spirit your spirit doesn't need any help it's perfect it's christ in you come on by the holy spirit himself indwelling your inmost being and personality so just a couple things there paul's actually praying for everyone to do what i've just been telling you to do wow that you would be strengthened and reinforced where? In your soul. Yeah, yeah. By who? The Holy Spirit using what? Dunamis power. Mighty so, dunamis power, which makes, makes you excellent in the soul. He's praying for us to utilize the Holy Spirit and dunamis power to be strengthened in every place that we're weak, to be reinforced in every place in our soul that's that's collapsing, that that can't carry the weight of the burden that we're under, that, that has been weakened by trauma or wounded by sin. He's praying for us to be strengthened and reinforced in our mind, our will, and our emotions by dunamis power through the action of the Holy Spirit. Now, I love this last part. It goes that that would happen, that we would be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and your personality. Mm, wow. Remember how you just said that people like just identify with stuff. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm that kind of a person. I'm just, you know, I'm a kind of a person. I'm a pacifist or I'm the kind of a person that, you know, um, I'm a little bit argumentative. <laughs> That's just who I am. Or I'm, uh, you know, I tend to be a little negative. Hey, those are negative parts of your personality. Yeah. Uh. But according to this, 
The Holy Spirit and dunamis power can indwell your personality and change it. If there's something about your personality that you don't like, stop identifying with it. Start changing it supernaturally by allowing and releasing, putting the Holy Spirit and dunamis power to work. Wow, so good. Miss Katie, you're, you're on a roll. You're, you're preaching so much revelation and depth right now. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians are, you know, very wary about even the word, the term soul. I mean, today, uh, it's, it's more normal for us to go see a, a shrink. It's more normal for us to go see a counselor or a psychiatrist or to have therapy rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts, our souls, our minds and allow in that place of meditational prayer and allowing the Holy Spirit to really heal and deliver our soul. But it seems like the world is catching on much more when it comes to soul wholeness and soul wellness versus the church. And that's why we do have so many, you know, uh, people that are unhealthy and dysfunctional in the church. I mean, you know, people are, you know, in a sense, there's more sin in the church than outside. There's more divorce rates in the church than in the world. There's, you know, homosexuality is creeping in. I mean, so there's so much going on. I mean, gluttony, diabetes. I mean, people are are dying from unhealthy eating, etc. There's just so much in the church because we're, we think all we have to do is say our hallelujahs and praise the Lord's. And all we have to do is be faithful and sit our behind in the pews of the church all the days of our life. And somehow, supernaturally, God is going to heal us or make us well or whatnot. But I feel like the world is understands soul healing and even physical healing in a sense better than even the church. I mean, I mean, we the church, we believers, we're meant to be a testimony just even by our outer appearance, just our temple. You know, I mean, this is the temple of God. So we're supposed to upkeep, take care of our temples, you know, exercising, health conditioning, uh, healthy eating, you know, sleeping well, uh, you know, not being tormented by anxiety or being so spiritual that you never sleep, you know. And so, so I just feel like, you know, what you're saying is so revolutionary and it's so important for these end times because the enemy is trying to get us so unhealthy, imbalanced, where we are so busy on the ministry rather than allowing God to minister to us. And again, we see the great healing evangelists of America, so many of them overworked themselves where they thought they were God, they fell into heresy, they fell into sin, rather than really taking care of their temple and taking care of their soul. Talk to us. Share, share your thoughts about what I just said, Miss Katie. Well, there's so many things going on there. Uh, first of all, we are called, we are a, a you know, priestly line. We're kings and priests. Yeah. Kings and priests don't just sit and go, okay, God's got this. Yes, God does have this, but God has called us to knowledge. That's why he's given us his word. We're supposed to understand how things happen. I'm, I'm going to go to a scripture. It, it, it's, you know, it's incredible how much we just want to sit around and <laughs> let, let happen. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't work like that. We're supposed to grow. The Bible talks about that the, that the strategies of the of of the kingdom are are taken notice even by the demonic powers and principalities oh. and that we are supposed to be exhibiting the knowledge and wisdom the high level knowledge and wisdom that uh -huh. even you know outshadows the the devil who the bible calls an evil genius ruler so mm. we're supposed to have so much knowledge and understanding of scripture that when the devil comes in with a device some sort of a complex strategy or plan against us that we by the power of the holy spirit supernaturally can unwind every bit of assault that he has brought against us yeah, and yeah. counter it and completely defeat and destroy it so on, we dude. have to know these things instead of just going oh you know god's got this god does have this but he wants us to grow and mature 
Yeah. He wants us to grow and mature. Now, people are going to counselors to get counsel, but here's the problem. You can't counsel a demon. Mm. See, when your soul is wounded, the Bible talks about this. When Jesus said in John 14, 30, he said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me yeah. that's in common with him. Thank so he has no power over me. So here Jesus is giving us a secret. He's giving us an insight on how the enemy gains power over us. It happens when we have something in us that's in common with him. What does that mean? Well, we have nothing in our spirit, man, that's in common with the devil. Because we have our spirit is Christ in us, the hope of glory. When we're born again, our spirit man becomes totally perfected. It's Christ. Okay. So what does that leave behind? That means that if the Bible, if Jesus is saying, when we have nothing in us that's in common with the devil, we'll have nothing in, then he'll have no power over us. That means that it's our soul. When our soul gets wow. wounded by sin or trauma, yeah. it becomes a legal landing strip. It becomes an in common wow. area. For the devil to wreak havoc against us, to control our mind, will, and emotions, to make us physically sick, to, to control our decision-making processes, to manipulate our mind and our thoughts and everything else. Our soul is the landing strip, the in wow. common area for the enemy to have power over us. But when we get healed in our soul, then we'll have nothing in us that's in common with him, so he will have no power over us. And th so people are going to a counselor to get counseled, but you can't counsel a demon. You so have good. to heal the soul of the legal ground that that demonic spirit is using to put oh, that negative behavior or that sickness and disease and disorder or that lack upon a person's life. When the soul gets supernaturally healed, that in common area gets deleted, that demonic spirit comes off of you, and then you can walk in wholeness. You cannot be counseled in the natural out of that situation. It takes a supernatural encounter with the wow. blood of Jesus and the Holy Ghost and dunamis wow. power. This is so good, Katie. And that's why the, one of the names of Ruach Kodesh, Holy Spirit, is the counselor. Come on. And that's why counsel is one of the gifts. And, uh, you know, it's a spirit of counsel. So I believe God wants to release that to you. And, I mean, this is this is just so good right now. You know, I, I believe, uh, you know, even though we're going off script right now, this is just so rich. And for time's sake, uh, I, I'm going to go more off script and just ask you, what do you think are five of the main hindering factors that hinders somebody's breakthrough in the soul. And uh, after that, I want to ask you, what are five steps to gain great uh, accelerated breakthrough in your soul? So what do you think are the five main hindering factors to someone's breakthrough in their soul? Okay, well, some of them are very, very simple. And you would think that we as Christians would just know this stuff. But yeah. I can't tell you how many times I go to meetings and people will not get a miracle until they do these simple steps. And, wow. then, and, and I'm thinking to myself, so uh, how come you didn't think of this before? And that is just for, for one, unforgiveness, okay, yeah. right? It's like, wow, people hold on for dear life to offenses. They, when somebody hurts them or does something against them, People seem to think that they have this uh, ability that it's okay for them to talk about that person, never let go of that situation, not forgive them, blame them for everything. And, and, and let's say, let's say what that person did to them was, it was true. Like somebody did something horrible to somebody. Um, that person didn't do anything to deserve it. It was done totally, you know, evil. It, it, it created pain. It created it created woundedness, it created uh, yeah. whatever, physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, financial hardship, whatever. It is still our responsibility on how we respond. Come on. It's like yeah. when you hold on to unforgiveness, it will completely block the healing of somebody's life in their body, their money, whatever. I can't tell you how many times wow. I've seen spines move into place. Yeah. When I, when I was praying for somebody and nothing would move and I'd be like, okay, who are you angry at? Oof. 
Come on. And they would go, um, so-and-so. And I'd be like, you know, I just led us through a prayer of repentance and forgiveness. How come you didn't think of that earlier? Oh, well, because, you know, they did this and this and this to me. Okay, but guess what? We are called to forgive by the Bible, so you need yeah. to forgive right now. And as soon as they forgive, their spine moves into place. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've literally had people feel people's spines, and there'll be a very big crookedness in yeah. it. There'll be, you know, a bulging disc. There'll be a an S curve or something like that. And as soon as I say, who are you angry at? And I have so, them forgive, and then I command those bones to move into place, spine lines right up. Boom. Just wow, like that. So My I mean, God. It, it's so simple. Yeah. But it's amazing how people hold on to unforgiveness. So that's the first one. And the if, second if we one is faster, dwelling so among the tombs. Okay. Memories, bad uh -huh. memories. And, you know, it's a long teach. I teach it in our, our teaching Legion Slayer. But it said that the demoniac there was dwelling among the tombs. Night and day he was among the tombs. And continually he lived among the tombs. Wow. So three times it talks about in Mark 5 about how the demoniac who was possessed by the spirit of legion was, you know, dwelling among the tombs. Okay, what does that mean? Well, when you look up tombstones it, in that Bible, it actually means a monument set up to cause a perpetual remembrance. Mm. What does that refer to? That's Jeez. referring to painful memories, painful mm. traumas, painful situations, horrible stresses that people have endured in their life. And they, once that happens to them, they get so wounded by it, they keep on dwelling on it. Wow. Night and day, he, dwell, he was dwelling among the tombs. Night and day, those people talk about what happened to them. Every time you see them, they bring it up. Oh, you know, this thing. And you think, wow, I've heard this story from you like 25 times. And you're still talking wow. about it. I'm, that means you're dwelling I'm, among the tombs. So it said the demoniac continually lived among the tombs. I know many wow. people that are watching right now have are either like that themselves. You honestly ask yourself, do you continually talk about something that happened to you or something that somebody did to you? So if you good. are, then you are continually, you're like the demoniac. You're continually dwelling, thinking about, meditating on, acting on, rehearsing, replaying, dwelling among the tombs. It's so like, good. It, it, and, and here's the problem with this, um, Pastor Ben, is that, uh, when it says that he was dwelling among the tombs, the word dwell they, there means, and this is the thayers, it means powers that are said to pervade, govern, and control the soul. Mm. So Legion was able to pervade and govern and control that man, the demoniac, because the wounds in his soul that came from him dwelling among the pain of his past. Now, remember what happened to that guy. The demoniac, he lost his mind. He was running around naked. He was beating, bruising, cutting himself with stones. My he my. lived out in the tombs away from his family. Uh, they tried to restrain and tame him, tame him. Nobody could. He broke apart the handcuffs. He was violent. He, he wanted to kill himself. The pigs ended up killing themselves when Legion went into the pigs. It's like when we dwell among the tombs, spirits like Legion... They assault us. They control our mind. Remember, Come he on. sat there when he was delivered a legion. He sat there clothed in his right mind. Okay. Mm. They control your mind. They harass you. They wow, torment wow. you. He said that he sat there clothed in his right mind. That not only means right mind. It also means to be healed of diseases. They put mm -hmm. disease on you, disorder on you. And it's all because you let yourself dwell among the tombs. So People got to let go of the past. Yeah. And Come ask on. the Holy Spirit to heal them yeah. of that trauma they've been through. I'm not trying to downgrade anybody's pain. But it's up to us to invite the Holy Spirit in with dunamis power and the blood of Jesus to heal us of the wounds that came from those traumatic events. Come on. But if we don't do that, and then we yeah. also keep talking about it. And yeah. talking about it and dwelling on it and thinking about it and replaying it and rehearsing it. And then you tell this person about it. Then you tell the next person about it. I was with somebody the other day. And finally, after three days, I looked at him and I said, you know, you've talked about that one event in your life probably about 26 times in the wow. last three days. You are dwelling among the tombs. Stop it. Woo. Preach. My gosh, this is so rich. This is so good. Miss Katie, we have three more points. I mean, can can you uh, 
jam packed us right now. Three more oh, points. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> but this, okay, this so is so good. good. I mean, I know our people watching. Their yeah, receipt, this is like, a big one. I yeah. see with a lot of people that what happens is when they get traumatized and they start dwelling among the tombs, they rehearse that offense so many times that they get violently bitter about mm. it. Now, yeah. the Bible in Hebrews calls uh, bitterness a root. Mm. And it says that we are that it will defile and trouble many. The word trouble there actually means to be defiled by demons and vexed and tormented by demons. So what we don't understand is it may feel good to be bitter and angry about what somebody did to you and because uh -huh. it was unjust and unfair. And, and that's all true. It's all true. People do terrible things to people. People endure terrible situations. But bitterness, if you keep on holding on to it without Jeez. repenting of the bitterness, it forms a root in you that will trouble you. Trouble uh -huh. you. And that word trouble means to be vexed and molested by demons. Mm. You're inviting demonic power. Oh, gosh. I hope somebody's listening. <laughs> okay. So good. We have to, man, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. You got to check your soul. Well, what have you allowed yourself to become bitter at? Mm. And then I don't care what that person did to you or what that situation was. For your own sake. For your own sake. Yes. For the breakthrough on, in, in your life. For healing. For demonic deliverance. For, for, for sicknesses to be re removed from your body. For finances to explode. For your relationships to come into alignment. You have to repent of bitterness and ask the Holy Spirit to heal your soul with dunamis power. So bitterness is a big one, Pastor. You know, I, I tell you what, I had a lady in a wheelchair and uh, she had been in that wheelchair for five or six years because she fell out. Oh, 10 years. I'm sorry. 10 years because she fell out of her car and hurt her leg. And it's like when they took her to the doctor, they couldn't even find anything wrong with her. She didn't break a bone. She didn't have a sprain. She didn't wow. have nothing. And, and, and then it got so bad, she went from a crutch to a walker to a wheelchair. And pretty soon the other leg started to hurt, even though she didn't need oh, <laughs> even wow. hit the other leg. And as I looked at her, the Lord said, she is bitter. Whew. And when I confronted her with truth in, an, in a loving way and walked her through that, pretty soon she's up and walking. And I said, what's your pain now? She goes, it's a four, but it's, it's a four. And it still hurts. I said, well, what was it before? She goes, a nine. I go, so the pain's going down. You're getting well. She goes, yes, but it still hurts. <laughs> she kept on hanging on to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, don't you dare get back in that wheelchair. Come I on. said, I'm going to pray for you later. Don't yeah. get in that wheelchair. You walk around and, and you remain unbitter. So the next night, I, call, I said, where's that lady I prayed for at the, at the opening to the church? She stands up. She walks up there with her husband. I said, look at you. You're walking. Come on. You're out of the chair. The husband's crying. Oh, my God. I haven't seen my wife walk for 10 years. You know, I go, you're walking. She goes, yes, but it still hurts. <laughs> and I and I looked at her and the, and the Lord said, that root. Yeah. It's still there. Sometimes you got to pray more than once. Come on. You got to repent more than yeah, once. Those layers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You got to repent until you pull that root out. Yeah. So I so, leaned in and I said, the Lord said that bit of root is still there. And she broke out crying. And so I knew it was true. And I privately, you know, we were on stage, but I whispered and led her through a prayer. And then we went walking and I said, what's the pain now? She said, it's a zero. Come on. We got to get rid of the bitterness. So that's number three. Okay. All right. This is so good. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I have time for two, but I'll just, you know, two more. Number four would be idolatry. That's a big one. Uh -huh. And that's a big teach all in itself. We got to yeah. let go of our idols. All right. Come on. Idolatry lives in the soul. It's our soul that wants an idol. It's our soul that lusts after clothes or shoes or face products or this or that. I mean, I, I we all have to battle with it. I battle with it. We all battle with idolatry, right? And, and it's hard. You know, you want to press in and see God move. And then when he, quote, fails to move, God never fails, by the way, we reach out towards okay. idols to wow. fix that problem for us. But the more we pursue that idolatry and we let it grow, I'm not saying God can't let you go and fix something in the natural, like go to a doctor or take a supplement or eat right or whatever else, because that is totally possible for sure. But if we let idolatry become excessive in our lives, we're going to run into big trouble. The Bible says idols 
cannot see, they cannot hear, they cannot walk, and they cannot talk. That's um, Psalms and, and Revelations 9. What does that mean? Well, idols cannot see. So that means they're going to cause you eye problems, blindness, cataracts, dry eyes, floaters, whatever. Wow. But they're also going to block your eyes from seeing in the spirit. All right. They said idols cannot hear, which means they're going to cause tinnitus, deaf ears, infections, pain in the ears, swelling. But they're also going to block you from hearing the voice of the Lord. Idols cause you, you know, they cannot walk, meaning they're going to cause crippling diseases. They're going to cause arthritis and, and bursitis and swollen joints and, and pain in the body and crooked spines. When I lead people through a simple repentance prayer about idolatry, I've seen hundreds of people's spines move into place. Boom. Mm, as soon on. as they repent of idolatry. So, I mean, that's another big thing. And then number five, I don't know. <laughs> We're probably out of time anyway. So That's incredible. Miss Candy, you, you are like a, a walking uh, thesaurus of, of <laughs> words and healing. I mean, you're, you carry the word. And I so appreciate so much rich revelation. We've definitely run out of time, but I mean, time's not even an issue. But uh, we do want to honor your time. You know, I'm so grateful. You know, Miss Katie, uh, I want you to pray just for breakthrough. You know, I mean, uh, if you can pray quickly, you know, just for the next, you know, 30 seconds. Those people watching saying, you know, I want to hold on to that bitterness. I want to hold on to that those bad tombstones, those bad memories. I want to. It's like, no, you, no, you don't. Just let go. Let cling to the cross. And uh, I believe that there's going to be breakthrough in people's right. souls. And their healing delivers. This was so rich. I thank you. Go ahead, just release that over our friends. Well, while you were watching and listening, I'm sure the Holy Spirit highlighted yeah. to you some issue. It may have been a behavior problem like bitterness or unforgiveness, or it may have been that you, you are remembering something that happened to you that you always talk about, that you can't let go of, that you're dwelling on all the time. I'm sure the Holy Spirit has moved on you during this time. So I want you to take that thing that whatever the Holy Spirit highlighted to you right now, because that was the Holy Spirit doing 1 Corinthians 2.10, exploring and examining all things and showing you the things that are hidden from you and beyond your scrutiny. Now, once he shows it to you, he wants to heal it. Yeah. So let's just release the blood and then the power of the Holy Spirit to work on that issue. So just repeat after me. Say, Lord God, Lord God if I've displeased you in, just, any in any way by allowing myself to get bitter, to I'm hold on to unforgiveness, to have to idolatry in my life, in my and to life. dwell among the pain of my the past. Of my I past. ask you to I cleanse past. me in the courts of heaven courts and in my soul in right my now soul. with your blood. Right with in your blood. Jesus' name. Jesus Father, name. Father, thank you. Keep praying with me. Say, Father, thank you Father, thank that you. your blood your atoneth blood. for the soul. For the soul. And that my soul is being cleansed of all unrighteousness right now as I confess my sin to you. And in Jesus' name, I know that your blood is cleansing the record of my sin. Now keep praying and put your hands on your belly now in your heart and say, Lord God, now I release the Holy Spirit to work in my soul. I ask that the Holy Spirit would strengthen and reinforce me with mighty dunamis power in my inner man right now in Jesus' name. That the Holy Spirit and dunamis power would flood my mind and heal my mind of all strongholds. That Holy Spirit and dunamis power would heal my will and all the wounds connected to it. And that the Holy Spirit and Dunas power would heal my emotions and cause every bit of my personality to be cleansed and aligned and to produce the fruits of the Holy Ghost. I decree, come on, just say these last parts with me. Say, I decree the Holy Spirit and Dunas power is making me what Dunas means excellent of soul in jesus name amen glory hallelujah some of you just need to shout some of you need to run i mean you need to just you know just go yeah just do a pentecostal hallelujah i mean that was incredible miss katie 
We love you. Incredible, powerful, powerful, powerful. We're so grateful for you. Friends, I want you to comment below. What happened to you? What did, what did Jesus do with you today? I mean, this show today on The Breaker, this episode, you got to share it. Share, share, share. Subscribe because this is really a game changer. Miss Katie, thank you so much for coming today on The Breaker where we're believing that there has been breakthrough in people's soul. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Pastor Ben Lim with Miss Katie Souza. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. Phenomenal. I mean, you can't get that anywhere. You know, this is so good. We love you. Thanks for being a follower and a friend. And we can't wait to see you on the next episode of The Breaker.